The Weekly starts now. Hello, I'm Jenny Simon with Ibicus, and I'm here today with Building Performance Specialist Graham Davis, my colleague, who in January of 2021 wrote a very compelling article about the advantages of taking an optimized value engineered approach to framing. So today we're gonna have a discussion about the benefits of this approach compared to conventional framing methods. So Graham, thank you for joining me. Uh, You're welcome, Jenny. Thank you for the opportunity, I appreciate it. Well, let's start with what are the benefits of an optimized value engineered approach to framing? Uh, Well, there are several. Um, Primarily, uh, anytime you can eliminate wood from a wall assembly and replace that with insulation, uh, you're going to save a little bit of money because wood's a lot more expensive than insulation, and you're going to improve the overall thermal performance of the wall assembly. So we refer to it as OVE, Optimized Value Engineering, Uh, The engineering part means let's not throw any more into the wall or into the structure of the house than is really necessary to provide a solid and durable structure that will meet uh, the various uh, load requirements for a given area. When you look at the overall assembly of a of a two by four wall framed at 16 on center and you add up the headers, you add up the plates, the cripples, the T's, the king studs, uh, all of those things put together um, and you look at how much of that wall is actually just solid wood. It comes out to anywhere between 30 and 35%. So uh, kiln dried lumber has an R value of about one per inch. So if I've got 30% of my wall, 30, 35% of the wall is solid wood, that means 30 to 35% of my wall only has on a two by four wall about an R3 to R4, right? Depending on the sheathing type and and whatnot. Uh, So that means only uh, 65%, uh, 70% of the wall is going to have that R value of whatever you're putting in it, two by four wall, typical is R13. Uh, so only that much of the wall has that R value. So by by a pr- taking an engineered approach, an optimized value engineered approach, we minimize as much of that wood going into the wall as possible. We create partition tees uh, that allow you to actually get insulation back behind them. That's often done by just doing ladder blocking behind that partition. Uh, It's a great way to burn up scrap lumber that you're gonna have anyhow. Uh, You do an open frame corner. Um, They have long been referred to as California corners, but I look at a lot of houses in California. They don't really get the credit for that. Uh Uh, But a, a California corner, open frame corner is one where you have framed it in a manner that allows you to provide blocking for the for the drywall on the inside, but allows you to get insulation duct all the way back into the corner there and to help eliminate um, that cold corner. So we've talked about conventionally framed corners. We've talked about partition tees. How about window and door openings? What are some of the the problems that traditional framing can cause in those locations? And then some of the the framing techniques that would address these issues. So in order to, to reduce the lumber throughout the house, you have the engineer size the headers to what is actually necessary. Because whenever you reduce the amount of header uh, framing material going in over a window, you create opportunity to replace that with insulation, thereby improving the overall ther- thermal performance of a wall. Even if you're taking one of the two buys out of a out of the equation, let's say you've got a, a narrow opening that had double two by sixes going in over it. Uh, In many cases, you can remove one of those two by sixes and replace it with an EPS foam or an XPS foam or a polyisocyanurate foam, which is going to get you the highest R value. And and you can even reduce the cripples going into it. Any final thoughts on overall, you know, improving thermal performance that you'd like to offer? You know, there's a there's an expression, you get what you inspect, right? Um, Because you just because you've created these open spaces behind the partitions and back into the corners and all that you've got to make sure that the insulators are 
getting that insulation properly tucked all the way back into those corners. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. Um, I have I have inspected many, many houses insulated with fiberglass bats and found that those areas are missing um, partially and probably in most cases because the insulator um, perhaps didn't have enough adequate training. Uh, there's high turnover these days among many of the trades and insulation is a construction trade that you can get into with very little, uh, very little training, quite honestly. Um, so you want to make sure that these guys have been fully and properly trained to understand what all these empty pockets are for. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it shouldn't get insulation. An IR camera will tell you a great deal of information about how that house was insulated and framed as you as you scan the house you can see every stud you can see those empty pockets you can see all of those areas where you're getting a tremendous amount of heat loss out of that house as a result of the inadequate insulation job or the excessive amount of framing going into it, it tells an enormous story about the overall performance of the house